another computer art tutorial and what we're going to get into today is using the liquify tool in Pixlr which we can use to make some really cool kind of abstract art out of uh, images of just about anything you can think of so let's go ahead and jump into this I've got this example up here of kind of this wild like dripping um, splattered blueberry image um, and so you could again feel free to do this try this to uh, tool out on really any um, image that you would like to try um, so I'm gonna go out here and I'm gonna start this up a new project and I'm gonna call it liquify let's choose full HD and hit create now I've already called up another image similar kind of image of a berry again you do not have to do a fruit or even any kind of food with this. You could do a portrait, you could do a face, so uh, you know you could do an, any object or any image really. And I'm gonna hit Command V to paste this in, or Control V, depending on your machine. And then I'm just gonna take this image and I'm not gonna actually stretch it too much. You want it to be about this size with some extra space around it in your frame. Um, that way you have area to kind of stretch and pull and play with the liquefying effect um, in. So this is actually a pretty good size for the entire frame here. Like I said, you want a little space on the edge. I mean, I guess you could make it just like a little bit bigger. Um, and I'll just pull it back into the center here. And that works pretty good. So then I'll go ahead and take my magic wand selection tool and I'll click in the white area around your image. So preferably choosing an image with some kind of white area around it that you can delete. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit delete. Um, it's telling me not an image layer because I guess this layer is not selected. So I'll go ahead again and click delete and then hit command or control D to deselect. Um, what then I'll do is I'm actually going to fill in the rest of this area, this whole page with a color. So I'm going to use my uh, paint bucket tool and I'm going to click on this um, top dot here to select my color. And what I'm actually going to choose for the color picker is I'm going to bring my mouse out here over my image and I'm going to select whatever the color is right on the edge of this image here so that it kind of blends that color together for the whole thing. So you'll see it's that kind of like slight tint grayish red color. I'll say OK and then I'll just click out here anywhere to kind of make that whole area fill in. And then for this last, this gray line area here, I'm going to take my paintbrush tool or your draw tool and make sure that your brush is big enough to cover it. For this, it looks like 40 is about good uh, size brush to use. So I'm just gonna try and go in here and kind of cover up this gray line that happens along the edge. And this doesn't necessarily have to be like a perfect process because again, we're gonna start abstracting and kind of pulling and changing the shape of this uh, image anyways. So, all right, so that gives us pretty good, um, you know, like a canvas to kind of start with. We got extra space out here and we got the color dropped for the background. So let's go ahead and test out this liquify tool. So these three kind of wavy lines over here is your liquify tool. You have some options up in this top bar here as far as the style. So you can push it, enlarge it, shrink it, swirl. Um, then you have the size of the brush. So you can see that I've got this size here. 178-ish is like a good size. It might default you down here at 40. So that's really small. You're not going to see too many big changes. So you probably want to go up to about 100 or so, maybe even higher, like I had it at 170 before. Um, I'll leave it at 150 for now. And then you have strength over here. Your strength might start off lower at like 50% or something like that. I like to go ahead and turn that up. Maybe I'll turn it up to 90%. Um, that way you just get a little more extreme with your strength of things. Uh, density, we can leave that at 50%. I think that that's fine. I haven't played around too much with that myself. So uh, I got it on swirl and I'm just gonna go ahead and click and hold my mouse and then kind of pull this image uh, in a little swirl action. And if you don't like your swirl, you can always hit Control Z or Command Z and um, kind of pull again and try it out again. So really just kind of have some fun uh, with this tool while you're doing this and just kind of like pulling this image so that it kind of gets 
uh, all kind of stretched out and liquefied looking. Um, I'll also try this spiral here and you can see if you just click and hold, it starts to kind of pull that into a spiral there, which is pretty fun. And I can click and hold and move my mouse all at the same time. So if you want to kind of get that spiral effect, but then pull it, you can also do that a little bit too. Um, and again, play around with each one, you know, enlarging is kind of a cool effect too, shrinking kind of pinches in areas, um, or you can just push, and I could just take this and push this area out, um, I could push this out here, maybe a little bit out there, alright, and so uh, yeah, there's a, a point when you get to it, and I'm getting close to there where I really almost can't recognize what image that I had gone with and so right now is probably about the uh, the place where I am about to get to so it's a, a threshold that isn't really any particular point in time but this seems like a pretty good time to maybe save my project I could still undo and redo and, and spend tons of times playing around with this but that's pretty much it the gist of it so um, you know maybe play around with changing the density and see what effect that has in your projects too so um, once you're done and all set we're just gonna go file save as always um, JPEG or PNG should be fine uh, if you want to keep layers for any reason this project only has one layer really so really doesn't matter um, JPEG is fine and we'll hit download and that will save our project just need to make sure it gets into our Google drives and then submit it on Google Classroom all right, that's it for today's lesson, guys. Hope you have fun with this tool and uh, get creative with your own liquefying project.